I would like to introduce to you Mr. Robert Rydberg, Sweden's Deputy Minister for Foreign Affairs. And he will be uh, discussing the international lessons from the Åland demilitarization and neutralization. Welcome, Mr. Rydberg. Thank you very much. Herr Talman, fru Lantråd, lagtingsledamöter, ministrar, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, I am honored to be here in Mariaham to celebrate together with you 100 years of self-government and autonomy of the Åland Islands. I would like to thank the speaker and the Parliament of Åland for the invitation and for arranging today's event. I look forward to our discussion on the demilitarization and neutralization of Åland. This seminar is indeed an opportunity to look back at history, but also to see how decisions in the past shape our present realities and provide helpful lessons for the future. In the aftermath of the First World War, the Åland Island was a difficult issue for the government of Sweden. Tensions were high and there was great uncertainty on how to move forward. The decision by the Council of the League of Nations and the subsequent Åland Convention created a unique arrangement in which wise leaders at the time used international law and diplomacy to resolve a potentially dangerous dispute of sovereignty. By Finland granting Åland autonomy and cultural rights, and by Sweden accepting the decision by the League of Nations with Åland remaining in Finland, conflict was averted. Furthermore, it has significantly contributed to Sweden and Finland, having today a uniquely close cooperation and relationship. There are few countries today, if any, that are as close as Sweden and Finland. Together we are strong defenders of international law and democracy. We stand shoulder to shoulder in defending human rights, both here in Europe and internationally. We are developing a uniquely close cooperation also on security. Sweden has this year particularly benefited from Finland's support for our chairpersonship of the Organization for Security and Cooperation in Europe. Were it not for the solution found to the Åland issue, Sweden and Finland would not be where we are today. And the agreement has held. It has been respected in the Second World War, in the Cold War, and in the latest period of unfortunately increased tension in our part of the world, it continues to ensure the demilitarization of Orland. The classic principle of the freedom of the seas, mare liberum, remains the cornerstone of the rules and principles of international law applicable here in the Baltic Sea. This is a key principle for us, with the Baltic Sea being open for all states, including non-Baltic ones. This openness has also been important for our security. At the same time, the special solutions regarding Orland, including demilitarization, has contributed to preventing conflict and to create trust. It is telling that the demilitarization of Orland was the focus of an agreement between France, Great Britain and Russia already in 1856. These great powers of Europe found reassurances in the demilitarization of this part of the Baltic Sea with the central and strategic location it held on many military maps in Europe. Allow me in this connection also to convey our appreciation for the work being done by the Orland Peace Institute. Your work to encourage discussions on the Orland example 
between academia, political establishment, and civil society representatives remains crucial. It is so because we see many of the ingredients of the Orland question in 1921 very much present today in frozen or hot conflicts in other parts of Europe and the world, with linguistic and other minorities caught between neighboring states, too often not ready to take a legal, rational, and long-term approach, or bent on using or abusing a privileged power position. This is, I may add, very much the reality with which Sweden continues to work in holding this year's chairpersonship of the OSCE. Our priorities have remained to defend the European security order, firmly based in international law, to uphold the broad security concept of the OSCE, and to address the many frozen or not so frozen conflicts in the region. Ukraine being a case in point. Also in exercising this both challenging and rewarding responsibility, Sweden highly appreciates the solid support of Finland. We share the same commitment to international law, to peaceful settlements of disputes, and to the power of negotiation and diplomacy. For this we are, of course, inspired by our own historic experiences, some separate, some shared, including the Orland settlement. The world needs good examples of how negotiation and diplomacy can bring lasting peace and prosperity. Orland was and remains a symbol of peace, and the value of the Orland example for international peacemaking should not be underestimated. Ladies and gentlemen, I think it's a moving experience for all of us to be able to take part in this celebration, most of us, not via Zoom or Skype, but in real life. It reminds us of what we have gone through in the last 18 months. The pandemic has pre presented particular challenges to our Nordic border regions, Orland being no exception, and our governments have had difficult issues to tackle. That said, overall cooperation between the Nordic countries has been close also during the pandemic, and this has helped us to find pragmatic solutions. Now, as we and the world are hopefully opening up, there are new opportunities to further strengthen our cooperation. I particularly welcome that our respective ministers for Nordic cooperation are looking at how to learn from the crisis, strengthen collaboration, and safeguard our integration. On a final note, let me say that for Sweden, this centennial is also about celebrating our friendship with Orland. Few other countries and regions can boast of such close people-to-people -people contacts as between neighbors here in the Orland Islands and in Sweden. Many young people from Orland choose to study in Sweden, and some Swedes here in Orland. Many Swedes work in Orland, and vice versa. Close cultural cooperation and joint festivals take place. And we share, of course, the Swedish language. Almost 10% of the population of Åland was born in Sweden. And there are even more people from Åland living in Sweden. These are important bonds to appreciate and to safeguard. Let us cherish the wisdom of our leaders 100 years ago who laid a basis that continues to serve Orland, all of Finland and Sweden so well, and continues to inspire us to do our part in promoting peace and prosperity in our neighborhood and well beyond. Thank you.